you know, he was a, a huge inspiration. And I, you know, when I first um, used to see him on, on TV as a kid, that was in London. And, um, you know, just seeing this man on the screen. And one of the great strengths of this musician was that, you know, melody, rhythm, movement was all important. So, for example, the tabla player, um, the drummer and the percussionist, which you always used to have sit next to him, he always made sure that there was an equal balance of, I'm the soloist, yeah, I'm the soloist. The percussionist is also on my level, and we're together making music. It wasn't like you're just at the back accompanying me. Because once upon a time in India, you know, the percussionist, the drummer was at the back. You know, he was at the back, just like, let's say, Ringo Starr was at the back. And all of these things, if we look at them closely, even in rock music, you know, the placement of musicians and the hierarchy um, of, you know, musicians and instruments which are used on an ensemble, they kept on changing around. You know, there was times in rock music where the drummer was at the back and then they decided the drummer should be in the middle or the drummer should be on the side. And um, so th these were all things which, uh, which politically he was also very aware of, that, look, I want to make a change. The drummer shouldn't just be at the back. He should be equal. And we, he used to have this wonderful um, uh, situation called Jugalbandi as part of the repertoire, where they used to play question and answers. Like, you know, the, the, the sitar player would, you know, play something like, and the tabla player would play like, you know, so there was all these kind of elements which he used to bring in, which were very, very exciting. Yeah, because at times, if you don't know about Indian classical music, you could either be taken away by it, or you sh or you could be you could be bored stiff too.